In November 1863, a reporter from the Cincinnati Daily Commercial visited Seminary Ridge. He would write of that experience a thousand tales of war and its incidents, which history may not record, but which tradition may preserve, cluster around this building, and for all time will make it a celebrated spot for the pilgrim to the battleground. Of course, he was talking about Schmucker Hall, the original Lutheran seminary building, which is today home of Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center. Good evening, friends, and thank you for joining me for this, the second annual State of the Museum Address. My name is Peter Mealy. I'm honored that you are joining me this evening as I share with you some of the exciting accomplishments of the past year and plans we have for the future. Before we get into these accomplishments, I want to dwell a bit more on the reaction of the reporter from that Cincinnati Daily commercial. While the historic buildings that dot Gettysburg's western ridge, including this one, Schmucker House, are literally brick and mortar, wood and plaster, I look at them as being figuratively etched with the lives of seminarians, soldiers, surgeons and nurses who passed through their doors. These buildings are witnesses to history. Inside these walls, individuals and groups contemplated the role that religion played in the new American Republic. In fact, I'm sitting in the space that was once Samuel Simon Schmucker's office. The founder and longtime president of the seminary, a leader in the Lutheran Church, this is where he did his most profound thinking and writing on faith, culture, and American politics. In this building and in Schmucker Hall, the Lutheran Seminary, men and women debated the American experiment in its darkest moments and watched as their country ripped apart and was reborn. They comprehended human suffering on a nearly unfathomable scale. They made the decision to take extraordinary sacrifice. These are just some of the thousand tales of war and its incidences that played out on this small rise in South Central Pennsylvania. So why is this important? Why is this history important? For the past few weeks, I've spent considerable time dwelling on a line from William Shakespeare's The Tempest. The past is prologue. I take it to mean that everything that is happening at this moment is because of something that happened in the past. Some of the experiences about which I just spoke sound a little familiar in our present world. By studying the past, we can gain inspiration, knowledge, and understanding, and use these lessons to create a better future. Over the past decade, more than 200,000 visitors have come to the Ridge seeking understanding. The most powerful reaction to the museum that I have ever seen occurred in 2018. After visiting our permanent exhibit, Voices of Duty and Devotion, a guest wrote, I came for understanding, you delivered. This seemingly simple comment has continued to drive our work for the past six years. To see our impact summed up so succinctly is both humbling and a reminder of the critical work that we do. So how have we fulfilled this quest for understanding over the past year? And how do we plan to do so in 2024? One of the most frequently asked questions that I get is, how is the museum doing? I am here to tell you tonight that the museum is doing incredibly. Last year, we welcomed through our doors nearly 20,000 people, which is approximately 95% of the visitors that we saw the last year before COVID-19. We also welcomed 136 groups through our doors, which is a record. This is due to the efforts of Rob Williams, our Director of Outreach, Cody Aish, our Director of Education and Museum Operations, and Caleb Kusmersik, our Education and Visitor Services Coordinator, as well as our talented Visitor Services staff. One of our most noteworthy events occurred in late 2023. In December, we were honored to receive a $19,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities through its Public Impact Projects in Smaller Museums program. This grant will underwrite a series of interpretive offerings as part of the initiative Investigating the Legacy of Slavery on Gettysburg's Seminary Ridge. 
Over the last decade, we've learned a lot about the seminarians and professors who made their homes on the ridge between 1832 and 1863, but who else was living here on the ridge? Since we opened, we've heard pieces of the stories of members of the black community who lived on Seminary Ridge. Now, we want to better tell the stories of these heretofore nearly invisible individuals and families. We know that the president of the seminary, Samuel Simon Schmucker, brought enslaved persons with him from the Shenandoah Valley when he moved northward to Gettysburg in 1826. We know that there were formerly enslaved people in the home on the 1840 census. We know their names. We know a little bit about them, but we don't know what their lived experience was like. We look forward to uncovering more about Eliza Payne, who, if you're familiar with Adams County's black history, was the daughter of Kitty Payne. In 1845, Kitty Payne and her children were living in a cabin on Bear Mountain in the northern part of the county. In the middle of the night, men broke into their home, bound them up, and threw them in a wagon. Before the sun was up, the family was below the Mason-Dixon line. After a protracted legal battle, the judicial system of Virginia confirmed the Payne family's freedom, and they returned to Adams County. This is one of the stories that shows the tenuousness before, between the border of slavery and freedom. Eliza Payne, one of the children kidnapped that night, worked in the home of Charles Hay on the northern end of the seminary campus in the late 1840s. We want to better tell the story of Daniel Alexander Payne, who was a teacher from Charleston, South Carolina. Daniel Payne, no relation to Eliza, came to Seminary Ridge, the first black student at the seminary between 1835 and 1837. What was his experience like in Gettysburg? We've already started this project, working with faculty at United Lutheran Seminary, independent historians, and the International Coalition of Sites of Conscience. We expect to have these new interpretive experiences ready by the end of this year, and they're going to become part of our regular offerings as part of our interpretive programs. You heard me mention Schmucker House a few times, the original president's house constructed in 1833. Home to Seminary Ridge Museum offices since 2018, we are starting to think about what it would be like and what it would take to open this house to our friends. It's where the Schmucker family lived and worked for more than 30 years. It's a home where black people lived and worked, as I've mentioned. It's where the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia ransacked Schmucker's office and library in retaliation for his increasingly anti-slavery views. We are eager to use this building to tell the stories of these people, to take knowledge, inspiration, and understanding from the experiences of men and women within the very same walls that they inhibited. We hope to use this building as an exhibit space, an educational space, a meeting space, and a gathering space. This year, we're putting together plans, including a historic structures report, to see what it would take to rehabilitate this building. In the meantime, we're looking forward to holding some events and programming in the house and on our new front porch this summer. And one of our good friends is donating his extensive library, which will be housed and available for use in one of the first floor rooms. With all this stability we, that we've been seeing, we're increasingly turning our attention towards endowment building. We have an endowment that we established in 2020, which is managed by United Lutheran Seminary's Endowment Foundation. And we recently started a second endowment fund with the Adams County Community Foundation. We've seen market success in this work and hope to continue to see more success in the coming years. These funds will ensure that we can meet our mission of preservation and education in perpetuity. I look forward to being able to talk with you more about this work in the future. Many of you have attended our events over the last year. The team here, all historians, loves sharing our insights with the public and helping our friends see that the past is prologue. Some of our events are free to the public or free with museum membership. Last year, we inaugurated a new lecture series, Fridays on the Ridge. Most Fridays in the fall, winter, and spring, a member of our staff will present 
on a historical topic. In some cases, research is still in progress. Other times, it's a fully formed presentation. Either way, it's a fun and engaging way to get together with some friends and chat. In early January, Cody presented, written in ink and marked with blood, an exploration of Frederick Douglass's 1969, 1869 speech at Gettysburg, how it was received by those who heard it, and what it means in our collective memory today. Caleb recounted the experiences of Confederate General James Kemper, one of the highest ranking officers here at the Seminary Hospital, the latest entry in Caleb's growing series on patients treated at the seminary. And I was honored to facilitate a rousing discussion on public health in Gettysburg between 1806 and 1863, tying this topic to recent public health crises. This was an illuminating connection between the past and the present. This is just a small sample of the original research that we are conducting and presenting at the museum. I hope that you will come and join the conversation. Last Saturday, we hosted our annual symposium, once again with our friends at the Battle of Gettysburg podcast. This is the third time we have partnered with Jim Hessler, Eric Lindblade, and Stu Dempsey, and we were honored this year to welcome Jody Wilson to our Motley crew. We spent a full day exploring the retreat and aftermath of the Battle of Gettysburg, offering new perspectives on media coverage, public health, and of course, Daniel Sickles. Last year during this talk, I told you that the 2023 symposium was the best attended symposium. Tonight, I'm here to tell you that this year, more than 90 people joined us in person and another 120 joined us online, making 2024, our best attended symposium ever. As I regularly say, we enjoy being able to present these programs for people who are interested in history and the Battle of Gettysburg, because if we didn't have this outlet, we would just be annoying our friends. We look forward to continuing our partnership with the Battle of Gettysburg podcast in the future. On June 28th, we will once again host our Eve of Battle dinner at the Seminary Refectory. Last year for this inaugural event, Jake Schindel from Ragged Edge Catering did a bang up job. We said, Jake, read these old menus from the Civil War era and be inspired by what you see. More than a hundred of our friends joined us for chicken and biscuits, salt pork, and of course, hardtack. Last year, Brian Matthew Jordan provided our keynote address, and this year, we are eager to welcome Dr. Jennifer Murray to the Ridge. I could not think of a better way to kick off the 161st anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. Our Eve of Battle dinner is just a prelude to our anniversary program, which we are already planning. Tonight, for the very first time, I am thrilled to announce that we will be hosting a special outdoor screening of the 1993 movie Gettysburg on Saturday, June 29th. We invite the entire Gettysburg community and visitors to pull up a lawn chair, grab some popcorn, and enjoy this classic movie that has meant so much to this town, set against one of the movies and Gettysburg's most iconic buildings. Other events for which we are preparing are our Sunset at the Seminary evening programming and our annual Legacy Weekend on the Ridge. Sunset at the Seminary has become a staple of our summer here on the Ridge and provides an opportunity for our friends to join together as the, south, the sun dips below South Mountain to the west and learn more about the individuals on these hallowed grounds before, during, and after the battle. Last year, in addition to our usual walking tours, we added book talks to our programming and plan to do the same this year. This May, in keeping with tradition, we will kick off the series with our final attack walking tour, which examines the critical Confederate attack and United States defense on Seminary Ridge. In September, we will host our annual Legacy Weekend on the Ridge. This event, held on the Saturday nearest September 16th, commemorates the anniversary of Lieutenant Colonel George McFarland's departure as the final patient at the Seminary Hospital. 
Last year, we focused on McFarland's unit, the 151st Pennsylvania, engaging in a battlefield walk of the 151st actions on July 1st, and engaging in lectures about different aspects of the unit's service. We hope to replicate this approach in 2024 by focusing on another group of soldiers and commanders. Keep an eye on our website, our social media, and emails for more information about these two events. And yes, we once again will be hosting our annual 24 Hours on the Ridge, Gettysburg's only Nicthemeron Museum experience, this November for the fourth time. If you want to see a sleep-deprived historian, if you're really interested in that, come on by at 3 o'clock in the morning. This event, in which we keep the museum open for a full 24 hours, is held in conjunction with the Adams County Community Foundation's giving spree and has become a significant fundraising and friend-raising event for the museum. In addition to seeing the sleep-deprived staff, we hold talks with local and regional historians, offer exclusive tours of the museum building, and watch movies overnight in the galleries. And then we all sleep for a few days after that. This year, our permanent exhibit, Voices of Duty and Devotion, is turning 11 years old, and we're working on some updates. New information comes out, new technology comes out, and we have to keep up with the times. Last year, I used this address to tell you about some exciting updates to our exhibit. Towards the end of 2023, Cody and Caleb installed seven new interactives, seven iPads containing information about the patients, surgeons, and attendants who were in the seminary hospital, a listing of United States Colored Troops or USCT soldiers from Adams County, and three iPads with information on the structural history of the original seminary building. We are thrilled to be able to share new information with our friends and easily update these databases as new information comes to light. We thank Americana Corner for its support of this project as we continue to tell the story of the men and women who gave their all here on Seminary Ridge. Our next project is to update some of our video displays with 3D images. On our third floor, which examines the Seminary Hospital, we have rotating displays that show post-battle images. We're working with a local photography collector to transform these images into three-dimensional displays. Visitors will be able to don 3D glasses and the images will pop out of the screen. We hope to have this done within the next year. This spring, in the midst of what promises to be another busy field trip season, we'll welcome dozens of classes including several Pennsylvania schools participating in our fully funded field trips, thanks to a generous grant funding from the Stabler Foundation. Students and other visitors will be able to enjoy those recently installed iPad exhibits I mentioned a moment ago, and we have plans to develop educational programming based on these offerings. And also thanks to Americana Corner, we will soon acquire new tangible elements for existing and future programs, opening the doors for new student exploration on Seminary Ridge. Just last week, we received notification that we are recipients of a grant to purchase replica uniforms, accoutrements, worn and used by soldiers during the Civil War. This will add a sensory element to our educational programming and provide opportunities for students to perform material culture analysis on objects from the 1860s. Thank you. Thank you to founder Tom Han and the team at Americana Corner. As we continue to offer our popular in-person and virtual educational offerings to schools visiting on-site or online, we are undertaking a new digital project aimed at helping students discover the importance of first-hand accounts when studying history. Upon learning a new fact about the past, among our most frequently asked questions from inquisitive minds is, how do you know that when it was so long ago? Our forthcoming initiative, Explore the Source, will help provide answers to that question as we'll create video and textual explanations and provide examples of our museum educators and historians' most frequently consulted sources. We'll feature everything from diaries, letters, and official reports to regimental histories, medical records and memoirs to maps, sketches, and photographs.
and much more. So by now, hearing all of this, you may be asking how you can support this ongoing work. Today marks the beginning of our Past is Prologue Spring Appeal. Your financial commitment will ensure that our staff of historians and educators can continue to research and share the untold stories of men and women who made history here on this small rise in South Central Pennsylvania. The themes of war, peace, compassion, and faith that these historical figures embody are universal and serve to help our visitors build a better understanding of the past for a better shared future. So I'm asking you today, may we count on your continued support? Before we say goodbye, I want to acknowledge the entire museum team. These are the people that make Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center what it is and provide a welcoming and provocative visitor experience. The Seminary, the museum, Seminary Ridge Museum would cease to exist without them. A profound thank you to Director of Education and Museum Operations, Cody Aish, our Director of Outreach, Rob Williams, who's recording this talk tonight, our Membership and Development Coordinator, Annette Jorgensen, Education and Visitor Services Coordinator, Caleb Kuzmerzik, who's also in the room today, Lead Visitor Services Assistant, Amanda Partner, Visitor Services Assistants, Brian Malkin, Joseph Staub, and Brian Short, and our new seasonal members of our team who are starting this spring. I also want to acknowledge three volunteers who have been with us from the moment Seminary Ridge Museum opened in 2013, Rita Goebel, Lynn Heller, and Lisa Schauer. Last summer marked the 10th anniversary of the, 10th anniversary of the opening of Seminary Ridge Museum. I can remember leaving my small apartment on Middle Street on the morning of July 1st, 2013, and walking up the hill to open the new museum. I looked at myself in the mirror that day and I remember wondering if I would still be around on the 10th anniversary of the museum and how I would feel if I made it to that day. I can tell you that what I felt on July 1st, 2023 was a sense of humility, honor, and accomplishment. Over the last decade, we have opened a museum. We've welcomed more than 200,000 visitors through our doors. We weathered a global pandemic and have created new opportunities for people to engage with their history. We do this all while maintaining and preserving a priceless witness to history, Schmucker Hall. I want to thank you for your support. Together, we are shepherding a celebrated spot for the pilgrim, and our successes are due to your efforts and generosity. Thank you for being part of our community and I look forward to seeing you on the bridge soon.